Hello guys, you are watching CPP Nets video on function pointer. So we will try to answer these questions here. Like what is function pointer and how to create them. And calling a function pointer using a function pointer itself. And last, what is the actual use of function pointer? Where we should use function pointer, not anything else. Okay, so stay with me and let's start it. So first of all, what is function pointer? So I have these questions and answer here. So as we all know that, Normal pointers variables store the address of another variable. Okay, so if you are writing something like this, integer i and integer pointer p, so this pointer p will hold the address of i. Okay, so we all know that very well. Okay, now what is function pointer? If it is function pointer, it will be storing the address of another function. Okay, so first you remember that. Now the question is how to create them. So we'll Take the example of this normal pointer itself. So let's suppose you have some function which will add two numbers and return the addition. Now you're going to create a function pointer which will store the address of this add. Okay. So how do you do that? So let's take an example of this one here. You wanted to store the address of i. So you created integer pointer. See, you didn't create a character pointer and store the address of i. No, you did this okay you created integer pointer and store the integer data types address inside that okay so if you want to store this type of address then you have to create this type of pointer to hold this address and what do i mean by that is the function pointer what you are going to create should return integer and should take two integers like this as a parameter and it is really very simple to create function pointers why because what you did in case of normal pointer here, you just created a variable and at front of the name, you just put this star mark. Okay, so we'll do the same with function. Let's suppose you have this function name and it is returning to integers and you will write this pointer at front of this function name. But hold on guys, this is not done. If you will see something like this, what would you think? There is a function. That function is taking two arguments as integer and returning integer pointer. It is looking like you are returning integer pointer. This is not looking like a function pointer. So this star or asterisk should be with this name. So how to associate this? This is the way. And you are done. Now it is function pointer. And you can happily add, I mean assign this add here. Okay. So let's see whether this code is really a working code. So this is your program. This is the add function and we are creating a function pointer here. So let's compile this. So this is GCC program name is them. We compile it. There is no issue in this program. Okay. So what we have learned is how to create a function pointer here. Okay. So what it is doing actually, it is holding the address of this add function. And there are two ways to do this. I mean, I just literally forgot to mention that, but I should mention that as well. There is this way of assigning the address of A and this is another way. Okay. So this is most perfect way because this will work even with the old compilers. This is not going to work with old compilers. Okay. So better you should always use this one if you want to migrate from new compiler to old compiler. Now, as this add is here, now you can use this function to call this function. That's the only thing what this function pointer is meant for, okay? You will be calling some function with some another name, okay? So you're calling this add function with this function and let's see how. So if you want to call some function here, you just simply pass these two values you will get some value like C here and we can just simply go ahead and print that. So let's compile this code. There's no problem. If we'll run this, the answer is three. So one, two and three. So you notice that your function pointer thing is working. But wait a second. This is a new way to call function. And this is the traditional. Way. Okay. So I told you how to assign that by using address operator. And how to call function there was this that simple way and this is the traditional way. so let's check this out that this traditional is working 
and yeah so it is working okay now we know how to create function pointer and we know how to call them okay and as i told you that your function pointer should be of type exactly what you are going to assign in that okay so this add is of type returning integer and taking two parameters that's why your function pointer is also returning integer and taking two integer parameters okay so if you will make some change here let's suppose you are adding one extra integer in that case if you will compile there will be an error too few arguments to function fun okay and if you will add another argument like one two three and you will go and compile so here you got the warning because wait a second and the result is three so this is what i wanted to show you that if your pointer is of not the same type what you are assigning into that is a problem here okay see the warning here so you should avoid using this because see this third value is avoided here okay only one and two are passed and you are returning is the addition of one and two here only. okay so far we have learned about function pointers and how to create them okay now there is an another question and that question is this calling a function using a function pointer we already saw this so we'll skip this question now there is this another question how to pass a function pointer as an argument to another function so let's create another function here so let's try to understand what is happening here you have one function function one and you're passing this add which means you're passing the address of this add function to this function and you're catching that address like this okay so this is how you write in function parameter when you are getting some functions address okay so let's run this if you will compile this okay i forgot to have this c here okay so let's compile again there is no issue if you will run this as it is still three okay so this function we are calling add function here with some function name and that some function is getting created like this now we'll see another question here and that question is how to return a function pointer and this is really very interesting question it was so easy right what function type you want to return these both functions prototype is same i mean both are taking two integers and returning one integer so you created a type of the same prototype here now let's look at the another one that another one is little tricky let's suppose you don't want to use this type def and all then how you will deal with this so this is your function which will return a function pointer of this type okay so let's do that and this type is returning integer and taking two integers so first of all you will enclose this function with one round bracket here like this so this has become the name parameter integer and integer and the return type was integer and one more thing this pointer and you are set now there is this function fun which returns a function pointer of type taking two integer as a parameter and returning one integer okay so this is how this whole thing will work so let's compile whether it is working or not so it is working and the answer is still three i know this is little tricky and hard as compared to this type def thing and that type def was more readable than this okay so if, if i will remove all that see this function is a function which will return this math function type okay this is a type not a function okay don't get confused you always write type here like integer and character okay so if i'm writing this math function that means it is a type and we are defining a type like this using type def and the syntax to define a function pointer as a type is this okay i know this is a little bit hard to understand but once you will practice two three times like pass some function and return some function and try to do all those things what i taught you here it will be a little easier for you to remember all these things okay so we have seen 
how to return a function pointer. Now there is a question which says how to use arrays of function pointers. So now I will create arrays of functions. So see, this is really very really easy, right? That you are creating an array of two size and the type of that array is math function, which is nothing but a function pointer, return integer, and take two integer as a parameter. Okay, that's why we are assigning these two functions of this type into the array. Okay, and this is the syntax of calling that. And yeah, this is new syntax actually. You should call it like this and this pointer and this pointer. Okay, so let's compile this as well. There's no problem and the same answer okay now this was a very neat and clean way to create an array of function pointers because you have this type created already using type def what if you are not using this type def and you want to create an array which stores these two functions of type this in that case you will again do the same thing you will wrap this put this pointer here now you do integer and integer comma integer what we did before i told you to wrap whatever that function was when we were learning returning a function from another function i mean returning a function pointer from some another function that time i told if you are not using that type def then you will be wrapping up your function and write the type like this so here you wrapped up your array with this pointer sign and return type like this okay and now we are good to go let's compile this this is compiled and running it is working okay so now you are not using this type def thing and all that but i would recommend using that because that gives a code readability this is so much confusing right so we have seen how to create an array of function pointers okay like this now let's look at the next question here and that question is where to use function pointers this is really very important question so i have a program for that and the best use i can say is you will pass your functions address okay to some another function and there you will use this function okay or any function you want to use so the best use is in C we know there is something called Q sort which is quick sort. This is inbuilt function which will sort your array. So let's suppose you are having some array, you will pass that array inside this Q sort, and this Q sort will sort that array. And there are a few parameters you need to give. And lastly, you have to give the address of your function which will compare the elements. Okay. So Q sort need a function to compare two elements. Okay, so let's run this and find whether it is really working or not. So this is GCC demo. And now if you will run this, see one, two, three, four, five. So you give this array in quick shot, quick shot sorted out the elements inside that with the help of this compare function. And after that, we are just simply printing the whole array okay and as i told this is making the ascending order if you will make like this like left hand side is less than right hand side and then if you will return true then this will become descending order let's compile this and check this again see first it is printing five four three two one before it was one two three four five okay so we can clearly see that this is playing a major role here but that is not the point. The point is Q sort need one function as a parameter. Okay. This function is a user defined function, this compare function, because sometimes what happens, you are sorting some structure. This is integer value, so it's okay. But let's suppose you're sorting some structure or something, then in that case, you will be passing two structure pointers 
you will typecast that into the structure and inside that structure there would be some field on that basis you will be sorting that whole structure okay i mean array of structures so in that case this compare function becomes really handy so that's the only reason this compare function is given to us i mean we are supposed to implement this function the rest of the things are taken care by this q sort but the compare thing is given to us okay because our data could be anything it could be class or anything okay so to recap that the best use is you will be passing your function according to your need this is really very good example to understand this okay so i think you got the video if you like the video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet i'll see you in the next video